Hi, everybody. So I would like to talk today about a new paper that was just published in JAMA uh, on the changes in the relationship between income and life expectancy before and during the COVID-19 pandemic in California, 2015-2021. This is joint work with Janet Curry at Princeton, Till von Wachter and Jonathan Kowarski at UCLL, and Derek Chapman and Stephen Wolf at Virginia Commonwealth. So, um, there has been a lot of interest in the mortality income relationship, also called the gradient. In particular, I think in economics in all recent years, so for example, um, uh, Chetty, Cutler and co-authors, they have a 2016 JAMA paper where they show that um, life expectancy between the poorest and the richest percentiles are like gaps up to like uh, 12 years, or 12 and a half years. And in the paper with, with, with Janet Curry in uh, 2016, we show that um, life expectancy or mortality inequality uh, increased for all the ages, but actually like at younger ages, there has been some different changes. So overall, there's been a lot of interest, but um, it's not clear how the pandemic impacted uh, those gradients. And it is understood that we have a lot of indications that the economically disadvantaged people are more strongly impacted, but how exactly the mort income mortality gradient has changed uh, remains unclear. So what we want to do in this paper is ex ask exactly how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the existing income and race ethnicity disparities and life expectancy. And we are using detailed contemporaneous mortality data that is available for California that includes uh, not only the sedent's demographic characteristics, but also importantly, their, their census track. And so what we first do is that we simply provide um, uh, life expectancy estimates for 2021. This paper is, uh, to our knowledge, the first to, to show how life expectancy actually has developed um, uh, in the second year of the pandemic. And we show this overall as well as by race and ethnicity. And then in the core part of the paper, we look at gradients and we follow a method that, that we've already used in the 2016 paper, which is that we uh, calculate um, life expectancy by income percentiles defined across like um, uh, spatial areas. In this case, we use census tracts, um, which are like way smaller than, um, uh, uh, than counties. So for California, we have around like 4,000 um, um, census tracts. And uh, with around like, you know, median uh, uh, population of census tract is something like 2,000 or 2,500 people. And so what we do is simply that we rank census tracts by the median income and then divide those groups and I divide them into, into percentiles uh, based on the income. And we use population estimates from the American Community Survey to provide a den denominator there. And the, what, why, why is it useful to do this method? It's first, um, you can look at uh, all, all ages, right? Because you, 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 you can include like children, infants, um, it doesn't depend on people having income. Then you include, you know, the whole population because you know you can include every death and, and every person and the last thing is that uh, you know measurement errors in, in life expectancy or mortality that you typically encounter in those small um, small area estimates and they get cancelled out once you divide those into percentiles i'm um, great so let's let's first look at overall life expectancy uh, um, from 2015 up to 2021 so including the, the the two years of the pandemic so um uh, up to the pandemic, so until 2019, we see here for overall California, the, the thick black line, life expectancy uh, was around like um, um, 80, 81 and a half, 82 years, and it was quite stable. So also over the whole US, uh, this period, actually life expectancy slightly declined or, or, or stagnated pretty much. Um, white non-Hispanic population we see is actually below the average, here the blue thinner line, and that is because and there is, of course, this large Hispanic population in California. And even though Hispanic population typically has like lower income on average than the white non-Hispanic population, they have actually quite good health and, and, and high life expectancy. So they're, you know, um, around like three years higher life expectancy. Then there's also a, a, a sizable Asian non-Hispanic population, and they have even higher life expectancy. So above 85 years we see here. And then 
um, the black uh, non-Hispanic population has, uh, you know, uh, um, um, uh, much lower life expectancy, uh, you know, more than five years lower life expectancy. This is like the situation that we faced before the pandemic. Now, overall, life expectancy goes down first year by uh, uh, by 2.2 years. It's a little bit about a stronger decline than, than, than US-wide, but, you know, similar range. And then that's the first estimate for life expectancy for 2021 here. We see that actually declines even further. So, you know, a year where, uh, where vaccines become um, available, uh, life expectancy declines by three years compared to 2019. That's the overall. Now, if you look at like individual groups, the white non-Hispanic actually um, a group uh, um, uh, has a less strong decline um, uh, than, the, than the overall uh, population in California. And that is uh, just by 1.9 years in 2021. And that's the case because uh, the other um, um, uh, uh, subgroups have much stronger uh, reductions. So the most dramatic reductions here is among the Hispanic population. We see a staggering decline of almost six years of life expectancy. And that is really, that was quite shocking to us to, to see that. We also see strong reductions for the black non-Hispanic population and interestingly also for the Asian non-Hispanic population, a population that is, you know, we see enter the, 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 the pandemic with a really, uh, you know, strong life expectancy advantage. And just one thing to point out here, what we see is that the Hispanic population, the life expectancy falls below the white non-Hispanic population for the first time in, in, in a long time. So this is really astonishing development here. Okay, so let's next look at life expectancy gradients. Um, uh, so the relationship between um, between uh, census tract uh, income and, and 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 mortality or life expectancy. And so first in the paper we show like some the super statistics uh, by median income percentile. So here in, in the first row, a column we have the percentile going from the first, like the poorest to 100, the richest. And we see that it's actually a quite large range of income. So the median income is just $21,000 in the first percentile and over $230,000 in, in the richest percentile. So it really reflects quite well a wide range. Now, uh, how do uh, gradients look like in 2015? So here on the x-axis, we have the census tract uh, percentile going from the poorest to the richest and life expectancy on the y-axis and we see that um at the, the the bottom percentile has you know just above 76 years of um, life expectancy while the top has you know a, above 86 almost 87 years life expectancy that's a really huge difference so 10.3 years of difference and it's actually um um almost comparable to the difference that uh Rashetti and co-authors find in their paper that is based on individual level income. So if you rank everyone uh, in the US by the individual level income, you get to a difference of around like, you know, uh, uh, 12 and a half years of life expectancy. And so 10.3 years here is, 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 is getting quite close here. Meaning with these, the census tract um, aggregation um, is quite a powerful way to, um, to, 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 to get to life expectancy gradients for the population. That's 2015. Things don't really change over time uh, overall. Uh, and they also, the gradients are also really stable for 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, a little bit of an increase. So now we enter the, before the pandemic, we have like now a difference of 11.5 years between the richest and the poorest um, and percentile. But now look what happens when we look at uh, 2020. And um, we see this really dramatic decline in life expectancy in the poorest um, 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 census tract bins and almost no decline uh, in, the, in the richest areas. So that uh, translates into a quite dramatic steepening uh, of the life expectancy gradient. So while we had in 2019, 11.5 years difference, we end up with a 14.7, like almost 15 years uh, life expectancy difference in, 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 in 2020. And um, that only gets more dramatic when we look at 2021. So um, here we end up with a 15.5 year uh, difference in life expectancy. And we see that the bottom um, 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 percentile, you know, declined from 75.9, so almost, you know, let's say 76 to, uh, to 71 and a half uh, years. So um, that's uh, a really dramatic decline, while for the 
uh, top percentile, uh, there's just about one year of life expectancy reduction um, uh, happening. And you can also, we can estimate linear gradients here shown on the right, it's just like coming from just like, a, you know, a, a linear uh, or S regression. And we see that the beforehand it was around like 0 0.075 um, per percentile. And that increases um, by, by pretty much a third uh, or more than a third um, uh, in, the, in, 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 in the pandemic years. So now let's look at the uh, changes by race ethnicity um, in the gradient. So again, as we had uh, seen before, <clears throat> um, the overall life expectancy declines were much stronger in, um, in the Hispanic, um, the, the Black and the Asian population. And the question here is, is this just uh, driven by those populations living in and you know, predominantly in the poorer areas, and is this just an income effect, or is it something that is on top of income? So what we show now in the in this figure is so again on the on the x-axis we have the income percentile going from the poorest to the richest, and the y-axis here, sorry that the label isn't shown, um, it's the change in the life expectancy um, um, uh, in the life expectancy uh, of these different subgroups, and we see that the Hispanic population had like a much stronger decline um, than the non-Hispanic white population, even conditional on income. So this is not just an income effect, but those um, uh, stronger life expectancy declines happen even conditional on income. And the um, Asian and the black population lie somewhat in between. And that pattern just gets even stronger in 2019 and 2021. So let me wrap up. What, uh, what we find is that, or we show is that the pandemic has sharply increased existing disparities by income and race, ethnicity, and life expectancy for California. So there was hardly any life expectancy loss in the richest areas, while there were four year declines in the poorest areas. And um, the, the Hispanic, Black, and Asian populations experienced greater loss in life expectancy, even conditional on income. And also stronger steepening of the of the of the gradient. So overall, what our results suggest is that the pandemic policies help to mitigate life expectancy losses among economically advantaged populations, but not among the disadvantaged. And it's really important to better understand why this is the case to you know hopefully um, um, improve the uh, um, you know pandemic responses for the future. Thank you very much.